Hello students, in this video, we'll consider the third fundamental form of the surface. Given a surface S, a parameterized surface S, with parameter function, R of U and V, we define the third fundamental form like so. It's going to be n u hat dot n u hat d u plus two n u hat n v hat d u d v plus n v hat dot n v hat d v squared, which of course we can use writing norms, right? We can also write this equivalently. So right, this, is, this is of course our third fundamental form three, okay? And so three is also written the following way. So three can also be written as what? As the length of n u hat squared d u squared. So of course these are squares, right? Squares plus two n u hat dot n v hat d u d v. That stays the same, plus the length of n v hat squared dv squared, like that. That's our third fundamental form. I'd like to relate the third fundamental form to the first and second fundamental forms, right? And so let's do this. And so, of course, one thing we can do is we can use sort of matrix uh, calculations to our advantage, right? So what we see over here is I'm going to do is I'm going to form this matrix over here, right? So form the matrix 3, which is going to be n u hat dot n u hat, n u hat dot n v hat, n u hat dot n v hat. Of course, those are equivalent, right? n v hat like that. That's my matrix over here. And of course, what we can do is we can write the matrix. So now, of course, we're going to use this matrix in a second, but let's write down the decomposition of n u in terms of r u and r v, right? So let's recall that n u hat can be written as a r u plus b r v because it's in the tangent space. And similarly, n v hat is going to be what? It's going to be c r u plus d r v like this. And if we write this like this, that tells me that n u, the vector n u hat n v hat is going to be a b c d applied to the vector r u r v. That's my basis over here. I should write this in matrix form. And so, of course, now what this says is now I wonder if I transpose this, and of course, what do we know? We know the Langard theorem tells me what? So recall that this matrix A, B, C, D is the negative of the inverse of the first fundamental form, the second fundamental form, and I transpose it like that, just because the B and the C are in the wrong spots. And this, of course, is the Weingarten matrix over here. This is going to be W transpose over here. So that's really W transpose. That's the Weingarten matrix. Excellent. And that's very, very useful for us, too, because now I'm going to do is the following. Now I'm going to write my matrix 3 in the following way. So we can write 3, of course, as what? 3 can be written as this, this row vector over here. So I need a 2 by 1, 2 rows, 1 column, n, u, n, v. Remember, this is a what? That is a 2 rows by 1 column matrix. And we hit this with a row matrix, n, u, n, v. This is a one row, two column matrix. And so what's my result going to be? My result over here, is just, I just decomposed the matrix three into this two by one, one by two matrix. And of course, it gives me exactly what we want, right? It gives me n u dot n u, n u dot n v, n u dot n v by commutivity, n v dot n v like this. And so now what we're going to do is, so that is in fact the third fundamental form. Now what's this first thing over here? This first matrix over here is going to be what? So this thing over here is exactly going to be just this negative I inverse to um, transpose. Hit with what? Hit with um, R U R V, R U R V. And then I have to do what? And then this one by two thing over here, I have to transpose, I have to transpose this thing over here, right? So when I transpose this thing, what's gonna happen? We're gonna get an R, 
um, the first thing we're going to get is we're going to get this thing first with a transpose. We're going to get an R U R V with a transpose like that. And then the transpose of this thing, right? So that's going to be the transpose. The transpose is just going to be the, the same thing, right? So it's going to be negative i inverse 2. I'll put a transpose, transpose, just to sort of reflect what we're really doing over here. The force of transpose and a transpose is just the same thing over here. Now, look at this inner multiplication over here. This inner multiplication over here is exactly just the first fundamental form, right? That's just going to be the first fundamental form over here. So that thing over here is just exactly equal to i, right? And so this third fundamental form is really uh, the negatives are going to cancel out too, right? So what we have over here, we're going to have a negative. So I'm going to have a 2 transpose, negative 2 transpose. And then we're going to have the transpose, the inverse of the inverse of the transpose, right? So that's going to be an I inverse, right? And then what? So of course, the transpose, the inverse of the inverse of the transpose, right? And then we have the, another I. Then we have an I inverse over here. I inverse. Like that. And then we have a, um, sorry, we have a two actually, right? So then we have a two. Be a little bit careful over here. So this first thing over here is clearly two transpose i inverse, right? Then we have another i. Then we have another negative, right? And then we have an i inverse, i inverse, and then a two. Now, of course, this, this second fundamental form is symmetric, right? So in other words, the transpose is the same thing. The negatives cancel out, so you're just going to have a two. Then you're going to have a first fundamental form inverse, and then you're going to have a 2 like this. Okay? So in other words, the third fundamental form is this product over here. So we've just proven that the third fundamental form is the second fundamental form multiplied by the inverse of the first fundamental form multiplied by the uh, uh, second fundamental form again. So that's our first relation for the third fundamental form. In other words, I only need the first and second fundamental forms to compute the third fundamental form, right? So only need i and double i to find the third fundamental form, right? Beautiful, okay? That's a very, very useful thing to have over here, right? It's one of the, one of the examples in differential geometry when you, want to, when you have a higher dimensional thing, like a third fundamental form, a fourth fundamental form, or a Raymond tensor, and you want to be able to sort of say, I can say something about this higher order tensor given only a contracted version of it, right? Okay, excellent. Now there's one other cool thing we know over here. So we know, of course, that the eigenvalues, so if kappa one and kappa two are the eigenvalues of this negative inverse like this, then we know that the Gaussian curvature k is just k1 times k2, and we know that the mean curvature over here is just k1 plus k2 over 2, right? And so I can use the Cayley-Hamilton theorem now, right? So the Cayley-Hamilton theorem says that this by Cayley-Hamilton, by Cayley-Hamilton, if we let, um, we know that negative i inverse 2 squared minus twice the trace over here, so minus 2 times the scalar, uh, the, um, not the Gaussian curvature, but the mean curvature, right? And then i inverse 2, and then plus the product of the roots over here, plus the Gaussian curvature is equal to 0, right? And so, of course, now what we can do is the following. So, of course, look at this thing over here. What's this thing squared? So if we look at that thing squared over here, we'd have like an i inverse 2, then an i inverse, and then a what? And then finally a, uh, a 2, right? So what I'm going to do is if I hit this equation with i, what's going to happen? If I hit this equation with i, the first i inverse will cancel over here. So I'll get a 2 i inverse 2, and then minus um, 2h. That's a scalar quantity, right? I can feed it into the matrix. Then the i and the i inverse will cancel, so I'll just give it a 2. And then I hit this with i over here, then we have a k times i is equal to 0. Because i is invertible, I can do this, right? Of course, this is the third fundamental form, right? So this tells me that the third fundamental form minus twice the mean curvature, the second fundamental form, plus the Gaussian curvature, the first fundamental form, is equal to 0. So there's a there's this 
relationship between these matrices over here for the third fundamental form. So I've basically found several different ways of ruling the first, the first, second, and third fundamental forms using not only Cayley Hamilton, but this matrix decomposition. So we can really sort of hone in on the fact that these matrix calculations make these calculations with different types of higher order forms and, and relationships, matrix relationships between them, very, very simple, right? So we can really use the tools from linear algebra to help us understand the structural properties and the geometric, the geometric properties of these manifolds in terms of the first, second, and third fundamental forms using some sort of really beautiful theory from linear algebra to really sort of unpack some geometric invariants. Thank you very much.